how much time per month did you spend, you know, having to deal with and work on these these properties that you've owned? Oh, early years, like four hours a month at the most. I could never in a million years have done it without you guys. <laughs> done for you real estate has just profoundly changed my husband and my life and our, our trajectory quite seriously. The skill and the care and the research that you guys do and the services that the wraparound services I should say that you guys do the done for you sure. services yeah. <laughs> it made it possible for two busy people who are both working full-time jobs and raising kids to jump in and get started and to do it in a way that we weren't at risk I have always been interested in real estate but I didn't really know anything about how to get into it this is back in 2012 it was 2011, actually, when I met you, and the stock market had not been going very well. Mm -hmm. And my IRA had just lost almost $100,000, so um, wow. a, a third yeah. of what the value was. Yeah. And so I wasn't very enamored with the stock market at the time, and um, but I also just happened to be able to have some funds that were available. And I did have a nephew who had been your client, and he, I think, was on his third house. And Ryan said, there's, there's a meeting. You could come and listen to what's going on. And so I went to, you at the time, you guys were doing home meetings. Yeah, Actually, yeah. you were the presenter. Uh -huh. Nice. And... Um, <laughs> Anyway, I decided to go get a game plan afterwards. And so I happened to have uh, have left a job and I had my um, retirement money in a separate account. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't tied up with a with a, a company. And I just remember saying to Ke my husband, Kevin, when we went into the meeting, I just want to like lay out well, like, all of our finances and so that so that we can really see what a game plan could do for sure. us, you know. By the end of the game plan, um, I was super into the idea <laughs> of doing this. <laughs> and my husband, who is an engineer and just worked technical stuff all day long, he just said, I will support you in doing this, but I don't personally want to do it. And I said, that's okay. I'm really interested in this. I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. And so we both learned enough together so that we could make decisions um, together. And um, But it's been kind of a project that I've been working on the most. And so instead of being a money partner on one house, we went in hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> and I, I just, you just had a really good coach who made me feel comfortable doing this. But we ended up refinancing our house, pulling some money out. And then I did a conversion into a self-directed IRA. And with that, those funds, not commingled, but separately, um, we were able to buy six houses. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. And where did you buy the first six? So four in Arizona and two in Las Vegas. Nice. And so we were very fortunate for the timing when we got in because yeah. the houses were so discounted because of the real estate crash. The idea is that these houses then generate not only rent, but then potentially equity, and then those houses can start to buy other houses. Over that 10-year period of time, maybe 11, we got up to a total of 18 houses. And it was wow. all from the houses buying other houses. Even in this different market that we're in, we still bought six houses um, in 22. <laughs> and um, yeah, all in, all in 22. You know, when you put your money in a 401k or into a, a a, a mutual fund, it, you just send it away. And it's somebody else's job to, to manage it. You don't really have a great relationship with it. But real estate has really taught me a lot about a f just giving me a financial education. And so, um, yeah, there's been problems all along the ways. I mean, we've had perfect tenants who have just kept our houses in pristine condition. We have had tenants who started out leaving ha having great results in our house and then like something happened in their lives personally and all of a sudden they left the house in not great condition and it cost quite a lot to turn it over um last year uh in florida there was a really big hurricane as yeah. people might remember and um so we actually had to replace four roofs <laughs> two of them with insurance two of them just on our own um and so but the thing is is that if you follow the principles that the coaches here help you understand and you are putting money aside for capital expenditures and replacement costs and you are um, making sure that you have the proper insurance coverage and other things like that, it does work out. I mean, it may make it so that you know, in one year, you don't have very good cash flow because you have greater expenses than expected. Um, but 
quite frankly, those early houses turned into unicorns, and they have um, helped propel all the other houses into to a, a just, you know, really solid footing. So it actually has been, I mean, sometimes it's really nerve wracking. It's hard to get insurance in Florida because of the hurricanes that have happened recently. And so you have to just really stay on top of it. So it, I found out it really turns into a, a business. How much time per month did you spend, you know, having to deal with and work on these, these properties that you've owned? Oh, early years, like four hours a month at the most. On the outside, the biggest part was doing just tracking the numbers that you needed to do the to prepare right. your yeah. insu- uh, your taxes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, you know, it, it when you are transacting real estate, it takes a lot longer. So when I sold three houses and bought six, that took quite a bit of work yeah. um, because you have to prepare so much information for the lenders. Um, but mostly. It takes very little time. It's mostly the accounting. The accounting is what takes most of the time. You guys have have such a handle on all of the properties that every one of your clients owns. You know when there's equity. You know when there's like lazy equity. Um, When's a good time to refinance? What new markets are open and available? What houses might you be able to afford if you made these three moves? And that's really what the game plan does. We were actually 50 years old when we got started doing this. And I mean, just in our, or close to 50. And um, I just remember thinking, well, this is a potential, especially because we potentially might have used my retirement funds to sure. start this. And um, and so th- so I think, you know, in some ways, the, the our game plan was how would you get to the, your dollar amount yeah. for your, your retirement? In and terms of monthly cash monthly flow? Monthly cash flow, okay. yeah. And and I have found that the cash flow has just been all over the map. One year I make a, a lot of cash flow, yeah. and another year I make like very little because it just depends sure. on the expenses. But what the internal rate of return or the, the – when if like if you sell a property and you go back over the history of that property and look at it, it's been bonkers. Yeah. And so in that regard, it has been much, much better. I'm like beyond my wildest imagination. Could you just define for me, like, what is the definition of bonkers? Yeah, I would say in the 10 years that we started, it, we 10 x our money. That's awesome. In terms of the value, maybe a little bit more. We use your coaches. Your coaches seriously just like laid it all out for us and then just step by step. And then probably the 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 thing that made it work is that I had a lot of grit and follow through. Yeah, you're awesome. So I, I have, I, you know, I'm a, I'm an incredible project manager. So yeah. like, I could just like knock this stuff out. And so um, that also is part of the magic sauce is somebody has to be willing yes. to do all the steps. Sure. Because you guys lay it out for them and you provide all of the tools and all of the resources and contacts and everything. But you got to be able to get in and, and knock it out. And yeah. get that done too. So Jody Gandhi is the real estate agent that you guys use in Indianapolis. When I listened to her on the podcast, I was blown away by the fact that she said she's helped you guys transact 700 houses. Because every time I have ever worked with her, I only feel like I'm her client. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like the only one she's working with. And whether, you know, like we just sold a little house. It was not a big house. It was not expensive. And so the commission was not like that much, you know. But she, but the work that she did and the personal touch that she had made and like that – the hoops that she had to go through to make sure that this house sold um, just it means it meant the, a, a lot to me personally. But to, for me to think that that's what she does for all of your clients, it makes me think you guys got a really great person who's <laughs> we, on your team. Yeah, no, we really do. And that's why we wanted to have Jody on because we know how amazing Jody is. And I'm so glad that you've had that experience. And I and Jody, if you're listening, you're amazing. Real estate is an incredible investment and you just have to work through your fear. Mm. You have to like push through it. Like once you've made the logical decision, you just have to like push through that fear um, and and then act. Like the first, mm. doing the first one's scariest mm-hmm. and it's not scary after doing the first one. Yeah. Real estate doesn't just pay you one way, right? And yes. So you have to look at all the ways that real estate benefits you financially. And so, you know, certainly there's cash flow from the rents. There's mortgage pay down because the tenant is paying for your mortgage. There are tax advantages. There are... Um, Equity grows 
And then finally, it's an inflation hedge. I mean, there's five yeah. ways that real estate is really yeah. protecting you in your financial future. And so all of them are working in different ways across different markets and different conditions. The skill and the care and the research that you guys do and the services that the wraparound services I should say that you guys do the done for you sure. services yeah. <laughs> it made it possible for two busy people who are both working full-time jobs and raising kids to jump in and get started I realized that I knew nothing about what made the stock market tick and there was nothing I could even do to choose how the stock market was going to behave. And so I did not understand that investment. But what I did understand and could wrap my head around was that there were homes that were available and people who needed to live in them and neighborhoods that needed to be restored by having people caring for properties and you know taking care of, of those homes. And I thought that is a value that I understand. And that is something that I feel like I can personally help solve and, and be part of a solution that makes a community better. And, and that was an investment that I could wrap my head around. 